All right. Hello, everybody. Let's get learning. Um, I just wanted to make a quick little video to go together with this document and kind of show folks what I'm talking about when I refer to things in here. Um, so essentially, Coinbase is this application. Coinbase is essentially, <clears throat> you know, the next step in kind of replacing non-local banks. Um, much easier to manage than most bank websites. Uh, basically, it, um, you know, the homepage, I can build a list of different cryptocurrencies that I want to watch and follow. I can build a portfolio, um, you know, kind of based on percentages of different cryptos. Um, I can also get a card and borrow, and I can even um, get an interest return on some of the cryptocurrencies that I stake on Coinbase. Uh, the other thing you can do on the main Coinbase platform is you can earn rewards for watching educational videos about specific tokens um, and protocols. This is a great way to kind of learn about some different things that blockchains can do and why they're useful um, and to see some of the different things that's done with different types of cryptocurrencies. Um, and then also you can stake different cryptos that you have. You can see here I'm earning an interest of 4.63% on my Tezos and 0.1.5% percent on my USD coin um, and so that's this is how you start to get into the coinbase ecosystem <clears throat> you can also monitor the prices of different cryptocurrencies on coinbase but it's way easier to do that in trading view so Coinbase allows you to buy your cryptocurrency for fiat, essentially at the spot current price plus a small fee. That's why you sign up for Coinbase Pro, and Coinbase Pro is a way to create, buy, and sell orders for different cryptocurrencies at the prices that you want. So you can also create portfolios and kind of organize the cryptos that you have and you can see here i have you know 33 percent of this account is in bitcoin right now almost 30 percent in ethereum and i have uh you know very little about seven percent seven and a half percent in cash right now and most of that is in these orders if bitcoin dips down to 27 thousands or the 24 thousands i've already got my buy orders in and if ethereum gets down to 943 i got a, a buy there of half an ethereum and then of course you can also see here the the orders that i've had filled from various trades and this is a very typical trading screen. Um, you usually see some kind of chart. You see an order book just taken away at the side and you see an area for open orders or you can even see the ones that you filled. And then you'll have an area like over here on the left, which is shows my usd balance which is right now zero because it's on hold in this buy at twenty seven thousand eight hundred. uh you can see i have here 0.15 uh, bitcoin and i can place a buy or sell and i can do it at the market price which would give me that bitcoin right away or I can set the price 26 
thousand dollars and I can put here how much Bitcoin I'd like to buy if I had the funds to do so. Um, and then it tells me the um, the fee and the total amount and I can place that buy order. Likewise, it would work the same with a sell order. Um, and so I might sell some Ethereum for Bitcoin uh, when it gets to 0 0.05. We'll see. I might hold on to it. But this is Coinbase Pro. And the difference is that I get to determine the prices that I buy and sell my cryptocurrencies out on here, but I don't have the, it's, it's a separate kind of like bank service. And so you can't do your staking or earn your rewards through your Coinbase Pro account, but they are tied to each other. So if I want to send US dollars from my Coinbase Pro account to my Coinbase regular account, it, it does it just like, you know, moving money around in um in your wallet or checking accounts or something so that's regular coinbase and that's coinbase pro that's well, now these are coinbase holding your uh crypto for you um and another kind of exchange that you can use that's a US exchange is called uh, Kraken and you can see here my total balance is almost 800 it was $800 earlier uh, but you can see that I have USD coin which is not US dollar so this is a, a digital representation of fiat money that this company is holding um, I exchanged fiat, actually I probably sold Bitcoin for USD coin and then sent the USD coin over to here. Um, I have 300, the USD coin is equal to just under a dollar right now, but usually it stays at about a dollar. And you can see also I have Tether USD, which is also another stable coin that's equal to one dollar. So these are the two cryptos that I'm using to buy other cryptocurrencies. You can see I bought some chain link here and its current price is $24. Um, this is another one that I might sell chain link when it gets to $40 for Bitcoin. Um, but so same thing, you have, you know, your balances and you know how much everything is worth and what you want to keep track of the order systems on here can be very simple you buy you sell you pick the amount that you want to buy and sell at you do a market order or a limit order but on kraken you can also do leveraging and you can leverage up to 5x um, and you can set a stop loss and you can set an expiry, you know, for your order if you would like. Um, and you can even uh, set, get a little bit fancier and set a conditional close on one of your orders. So, Kraken allows you to not only have a more complex order uh, for mostly short-term trading, um, boom, 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 um, but it, it gives it to you in an interesting little interface. You also can stake your crypto on... Um, the platform and you can see here I have Tezos uh, the total Tezos at one time I had staked um, but you can see they give you different percentages for 
the different cryptos that you have staked. You get a 12% return on your polka dot that you just hold on to here. And I may even be doing this uh, Ethereum staking. So, um, so Kraken is pretty interesting. See, I don't have any orders at the current moment. Um, and that's staking. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Now, trading view. So now that you have the ability to buy and sell cryptocurrencies and you um, are still having other people hold your cryptocurrencies for you. So we won't get beyond that today. But how to track or know the actual price of the cryptocurrency that you have. Um, exchanges have been known to make mistakes. Um, the U.S. Ex exchanges are used to heavy regulatory laws, um, so there's been uh, there's more safety in the U.S. exchanges, but this is also more regulated space in the U.S. But so trading view is the application that you would want to use in order to. Um, get other people to create your own ideas about what's happening in markets. You can create mathematical tools to help you analyze price action in the market. Um, you can even find brokers and connect TradingView to platforms that allow for traditional stock market exchanges. So there are, you have access to your traditional markets and your crypto markets in um, you know in this application stocks futures forex CFDs indexes different economies um, mostly I stay in the crypto space and here I have a super crazy chart with lots of information. So let's create a new chart. Layout. Okay. So this is a standard clean chart. The only other, what you see here is price action on weekly candles and you can see the the volume at the bottom of the screen and the volume indicator all indicators have settings and you can see we've now put a a moving average on the volume so that we can see if volume is increasing or decreasing um, you know, relative to the past history. Uh, this application, I pay for it, uh, but you can get a free version of it. The free version does have some ads. It doesn't allow you to put a lot of indicators on, which is okay. And it also doesn't allow you to create a lot of alerts. One of the things that I can do in this application is I can create a line and an alert. And then if in the next week, Bitcoin drops and touches this line, I'll get a notification. Okay. May that's one of the, the features of this application. Um, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, and that's all I'll say about that. So I would recommend TradingView. 
some of the links in the document uh, has people that that use trading view and you can see how they use it um, let's close that out you can see here the reason why my screen looks so crazy is that up here in this top frame i am measuring this top frame measures the volatility of a bitcoin or whatever asset i'm looking at these red lines are areas where bitcoin has created some resistance these green lines are areas of support and i have an indicator that kind of shows me um, those support and resistances. And also, I have on these lines, which are called moving averages. Um, so it looks back over a given time frame and then gives me, you know, the average price line. And one of the things that you notice is over time, um, let's see what. So I go to a weekly time frame. Um, Bitcoin follows this yellow line and will come down to test it and then it'll increase and then it comes down to correct and test it. And then when it breaks under the yellow line, it goes down, it comes up the yellow line and gets pushed down. And then it'll cross the yellow line, which is the 21 week moving average. And then same thing, it comes down, it plays around that line. And now this is, we're on another, another bull run and we can expect pullbacks. You know, this is why a pullback to 22,000 may seem like a lot, but we, we, it's something that we should always expect. And the closer you are to this 21 moving average, the less risky your trade may be, right? Because if it's going to come down, you don't want to buy Bitcoin when it's far away from the moving average. You want to buy Bitcoin when it's close to it, and then you want to sell it uh, when it's far away from it or buy it when it's far away to the downside. This is another indicator that kind of just measures um, strength in the movement of the price action. And it creates interesting little patterns. But you can see here when these two tops were created, you got a movement to the downside. You got this, this bearish move here. Um, likewise, with these hidden bullish divergences, you got some play to the upside. Um, so there's patterns that can develop in these indicators that can give you an idea of if a trend is continuing or changing in reversing direction. This is the stochastic indicator and I have no idea where it's at right now. This is the MACD. And this is just another indicator where we're looking for certain patterns. Um, you know, this is, boom. You know, we can kind of infer different shapes and patterns based on some of the symmetries or relationships that we see in the charts. And then this is one, a new crazy one that I'm, I've been uh, experimenting with. Um, but you know, this this red here is telling me that 
the strength of the down moves that we have are continuing and increasing. Um, so, you know, I can kind of expect a little bit more down moves. Once this green line crosses above this threshold of 20 and, and crosses above the red line, then Bitcoin will start uh, its upward trend. All right, so way too much information. Um, probably just enough to ask a bunch of questions. So feel free to leave your comments in the paper. I'll get to them um, when I can and maybe even make some more videos that explain it. So look for this in my YouTube channel. Thank you and have a good day.